Welcome to the Worth Listening Podcast, where we focus on having positive and productive conversations around money. I'm your host, Lauren, a four-time Olympian and certified financial planner. On this show, my guests share their money stories. Everyone has a unique story and experiences both wins and losses when it comes to money. My intent is to give listeners something they can relate to, something that builds their courage to be open and take control of their own money story. When I'm not creating a great show for my listeners, I'm running my company, Worth Winning, where I help individuals and families organize their finances. Check us out at worth-winning.com. All right, now on with the show. Hey, hey, I hope you all are having a wonderful summer. We are headed into fall, and this podcast is coming out on the heels of my birthday weekend. Of course, like all big holidays and first of the months and New Year's um, birthdays, for me at least, are a time of reflection. And what I've reflected on over the last couple of days is wanting to do a better job of being brave, sharing more authentically, and worrying less about obstacles and instead focus on opportunities. Now I have to say this mostly relates to the two new service offerings that I have. As deciding to move forward them has been risky and required me to put myself out much more than I am used to, and it has been incredibly uncomfortable. However, I feel my calling within the financial industry is filling a gap with services that are specific to young professionals. Those are goals related to something that I have going on right now, but I do also have some personal goals as well that I've been thinking on and wanted to share with you all. One is to continue to travel. Another one is to continue to give away 10% of my income to people or causes that I want to help. Also to continue to hold myself accountable to regularly evaluating my spending to make sure that it aligns with my values. Other things I wrote down were to prepare for retirement, have children, and to fairly compensate people for their work, whether as a consumer or an employer. And that's been a really big one for me over the last couple of years. I think we're kind of taught to think that we got to look for a bargain and a deal and negotiate to get the best price. But having been a small business owner for some time now, I realized that there is someone on the other end of that negotiation, that price haggling, And most businesses are charging according to what they need to do in order to cover their expenses and make a fair profit based on the value that they're providing. I also don't want to be seen as a slumlord employer. I'd love for my employees to feel really good about the culture that we have at Worth Winning in addition to their compensation, the benefits that are available to them, and that this be really a place that treated them fairly, provided an opportunity for them to grow. And so I've really, really been working hard on, like I said, being a good consumer and a good employer. Now, I know it may sound like I'm on a little bit of a tangent, like what is this podcast about today? But I think the main thing that gets in the way of us reaching our goals is distractions. We are easily distracted when we're lacking knowledge necessary to stay focused. So today I want to discuss financial distractions and financial literacy. But before we get started, I wanted to let Those of you who are regular listeners know that Chloe is coming back. Yes, back by popular demand. We have decided to do a three-part series on stock options. And if you've been listening to the Know Better, Do Better series all year long, you know that Chloe is the girl to talk to if you have stock compensation and you work in tech. So we figured why not break down the three main types of stock options because so many people have them but don't know what to do with them. All right. Let's talk distractions and financial literacy. A distraction is anything that draws away or diverts the mind or attention from true financial success. This means distractions can either be imposed by others or they can be self-imposed. Either way, though, it is a diversion of attention. And it's important that we be able to name those distractions and be able to direct ourselves back to the things that are important to us. Now, when it comes to understanding what literacy is and why it is important, we throw that term around quite a bit. There is that, are you able to read and write type literacy? Then there's the what level of competence or knowledge do you have in a specified area type of literacy? And that's kind of what we're referring to when we speak of financial literacy. 
Do you have any competence or knowledge in this area? So today I want to walk through, like I said, distractions and literacy. And, you know, we've been having some tough conversations. I gave you all some tips for having tough conversations just last week. And while everything I say may not feel good, we know that we are better at the end of having sorted through these things, thought about them so that we can make the best decisions for ourselves and the people around us. I actually know a person who was illiterate for quite a bit of their childhood and and have been privy to some of the things they went through as they struggled to become literate. And I think the same struggles are similar when it comes to financial literacy. However, a lot of us are not willing to admit that we lack literacy. Okay, so let me give you an example. Let's go with credit. That's something that's always talked about. Credit is a means to acquire debt. So if you're not trying to get debt, why is your credit so important? If I had a dollar for the number of times that someone looked at me like I had three heads every time I told them to close a credit card or to do something that was perceived to negatively impact their credit, I would be a millionaire. I think actually I've probably made myself look less credible as a financial planner to them because what they've heard is different from what I'm saying but they've never taken a moment to think about it for themselves. So this is where we start to talk distractions versus literacy. There's lots of information being shared, but some of that information is very distracting. So let's just think about it. If you have a house and a car and you've already got student loan debt, what else do you need? Those are usually the big three. And as an example, I've had a couple recently where the spouse had an 800 credit score and the other partner pushed back quite a bit when I said, you do not need an additional credit card. They wanted to get an additional credit card because they wanted to improve their credit score. And so when I asked the question, what do you plan to buy? And they took a moment to think about it. They realized they didn't have any plans to purchase anything. They just wanted to have a good, a great credit score because their spouse did. And so they were looking for ways to improve their credit, despite not actually needing to use any additional credit. So this is what I mean when we start talking about one, literacy, and also distractions. The distraction is that credit is the most important thing on the planet. Literacy would have us think about, how is this thing that I've heard relevant to me? Why do I need this credit? I'm not telling everybody go around and have bad credit. (laughs) Definitely not saying that. But you can get distracted by focusing on the wrong thing. There are much more important things to be thinking about if this is not, in fact, your battle. Another example I have, I recently spoke to a woman who made $180,000 per year and was working really hard to pay off some student loan debt. This is one of those things that is incredibly admirable. And there's a lot of talking heads that say, like, you have to pay off every single dollar of debt. But in this particular situation, this person had saved nothing for retirement and was planning to retire in no more than 15 years. So if you've got no money saved for retirement, but you're 15 years away from your perspective, how are you going to get there when you're throwing everything you have at your debt? A person lacking literacy might prioritize paying debt over saving something for themselves. Luckily, during the time that I got to speak to this individual, I got to run the numbers and show her that it was pretty much impossible for her to hit her desired retirement age unless she started to save. She couldn't afford to wait two or three more years to be done with her student loan debt and then start saving. She was already behind. And might I add that she was making some gallant efforts. So she'd gotten her budget down, gotten everything straightened out, and was putting sometimes as much as $10,000 per month toward her student loans. I wanted to give her a pat on the back for being so brave and and working so hard. But also, if at the end of it, there is no reward, then, oh my goodness, you're going to be so sad. And she was suffering from debt fatigue. This is where, like I said, those distractions can have you focusing on the wrong thing. You need to get a plan in place based on what your goals, vision, and values are and take action based on what is going to help you reach your goals, not just on what some talking head said was the right thing to do because it may not be the right thing to do for you. Some of you may have heard via the last podcast or social media that I'm launching retreats and also a 12-week program, but I'm not starting it for me. I'm starting it for you. 
I was 20 years old and earning upwards of $200,000 a year and completely illiterate from a financial standpoint. What I did not know was costing me dearly. (laughs) But when you start learning about finances, you feel this overwhelming source of power. And being able to give that to other people has been such a blessing for me. And it's truly the reason that I created the 12-week program and the retreats that are both launching in October. We come from a society where we're constantly being told to pay for it later. Don't worry about it. Pay for it later. Well, being a financial planner has taught me that the pay later mentality the world is passing along is in fact resulting in people paying later. Later comes along and you can't afford to do the things that are truly important to you because you took actions based on financial distractions. And while we're talking about paying later, I have one more common distraction. Buy property is the way to build wealth. We all have to be home buyers. (laughs) This is a distraction because it is the only piece of the puzzle that you heard. There's a lot more to think about as it pertains to home ownership. And one of the things I want to point out is that while this debt is long-term, it's not meant to be forever. That is part of the distraction. All right, let me give you an example. So let's say you buy a home at 40 and it is a standard 30-year mortgage. Well, that means you're going to be paying it until age 70. Well, maybe you said you wanted to retire at 50. Well, typically what happens in retirement is that you don't have a big housing cost because you have now paid off a mortgage. If you don't, in fact, pay off the mortgage, now you're having the plan to cover your housing in retirement. So that's additional expenses that you'll have that need to be accounted for. And of course, this is not the end of the world, but this is definitely something you should be thinking about as you think about things like refinancing. A lot of people refinanced over the last year to get the lower interest rate, but they spread their loan out over a longer period of time. And so the result is going to be them paying it off later down the road when, like I said, they may have already hit retirement or some of their other financial goals have come into play. We also talk about the idea of whether you want to travel. That's something a lot of people say they want to do when they get to retirement or something people want to do now. So the distraction is doing it because everyone else is doing it, because everyone says you need to do it, because they say that it's the way to build wealth. And of course, I'm not saying home buying is bad. It's just a very good example of how people can make mistakes by being distracted versus literate. And so to bring literacy back into the fold of the conversation, one thing about home buying is that they're going to ask you about the details of your finances. And if there's one thing that a lot of people don't like, it's to be judged, which is why we're so secretive about money in the first place. But when you're buying a home, you are in fact being judged. So you don't want to apply because someone told you you needed to get a home and then have to cross your fingers that you passed the test and that everything is okay. It makes a lot of sense, even if you are eligible for a home purchase, to really take this opportunity to deep dive into the minutia of your finances, to better orient yourself about where you are financially, and to set additional goals. The narrative related to some of the distractions I've described are backed by examples of accidental success. But there's a difference between accidental success and intentional success. Many people have accidental success. The problem is not being able to replicate it. However, when you have intentional success, you can replicate what you have done. But even more importantly, you can teach someone else to do it. And so as we listen to distractions, people are like, oh, you need to do this thing because it's how you create wealth. You need to do this thing because it's the right thing to do. You need to pay off this debt, blah, 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 blah. But they're not actually adding to the probability that you're going to be successful because if they in fact knew the information that they were sharing to be true, they'd be able to teach you why this strategy that they're sharing with you is going to work and why it is relevant to your overall scenario. Think about the people around you that you care about. This could be your children, your parents, your best friend, your partner, your spouse. Imagine how you knowing the importance of intentional success and the steps to reach your financial goals and them not knowing can be harmful to both of you. Time is incredibly valued and priceless. We hear it all the time. Yet and still, we brush it off and we keep on, quote unquote, grinding. 
I think it's time we stop allowing ourselves to be distracted and start putting in the effort to become literate. And that is exactly why I created the 12 week program and the retreats. So many people have no time. They don't want to dedicate the space. They want to be handheld. They just want someone to give them the answers. And it may be appropriate for where you are in life, but Sometimes you need to say, this is important to me. I'm going to set aside time to do it. The same way you would go off and you would get certified in a weekend program to do CPR or coding or some other thing that you're interested in. Sometimes you have to set aside time to become certified in your own finances. I've created these two service offerings because someone needs it. And honestly, God put it on my heart. This is not my thing. This is what I was told to do. I am terrified by the active marketing that is required to get people to attend. I actually know very little about how to market a service like this because in my regular business, there's a steady flow of clients that are coming in, finding me via Google and other places. But these two services have a particular time frame and also require a group to be effective. So I have a space for seven people to show up in Atlanta in October. If only one shows up, I might as well have done my one-on-one service with her that I usually do. There are too many people that are allowing themselves to be distracted by blanket advice given by financial influencers and podcasters. When literacy is about questioning the information and doing additional research to find out what is right for you. So many people are being bombarded with information and they have a lot of pieces of information, but they lack actual understanding of how it is applicable to them. And in those situations, knowing nothing sometimes ends up being about the same. And it's not for lack of trying to educate yourself, but it's about bumping into all these different distractions that can keep you from reaching your goals as you try to educate yourself, which is why you need to think about creating a customized plan, not based on blanket advice that is applicable to everyone. I'm not sure who I'm talking to, but there's someone who needs to know that there's a retreat happening October 14th through the 17th in Atlanta. It is for single women. And I expect it to be the first of many retreats put on for all different types of groups. It is $3,500 and it is priced based on value. So I would not be focusing on the cost. And my pricing is fair, but it is not final. So if you are listening right now, you are been moved. You know you have been chasing the distractions and you're ready to get more literate, but you truly, truly cannot afford the full amount. Hit me up anyway. As I said, this is something I've been called to do. And so to make sure that people get served appropriately is my number one priority. It's tough for me, but I'm going to continue to follow through. I'm going to continue to talk about it because I'm excited to see what's going to happen when people take advantage of these opportunities. Literacy and distraction happen both to people who earn a lot and those who earn a little. There's no particular number of earnings or amount that you have to bring in in order to fall prey to being illiterate and becoming distracted. Sometimes people who earn a little, quote unquote, have that victim mindset. They use phrases like, you don't understand my situation. If I was earning the way some of these other people are, things would be different. Well, as I said, I'm all about focusing on the opportunities instead of the obstacles. And so let's think of a person who maybe can't afford a car, who is living with relatives right now, and for all intents and purposes is paycheck to paycheck. I would argue that that person is in a better situation than someone who has dug themselves a hole with tons and tons of debt, but has great income. Because what do you do with the great income? You first have to pay down the debt to get to net zero, whereas the person who doesn't have a whole lot is already at zero. This is what I'm talking about when I'm saying, let's ditch the excuses, let's get literate, let's get excited and focus on the opportunities. If you're that person, you have the opportunity to become financially literate, then go out and figure out how to earn more. You must be making the most of what you have now to be properly equipped when more comes your way. Whether you have a little or you have a lot, you can be illiterate. And the lack of literacy is what is going to lead to you not making good financial decisions and not reaching your financial goals. Yes, I know that some people listening are in a tough situation. Things may be tough, but being understood or sympathized with does not produce anything. So go earn more income. Build yourself an empire from the ground up. Opportunity is all around you, but it starts with investing in yourself 
from a literacy standpoint. There are some real easy things we can do, but don't. Many people don't want to pay a financial professional because they're like, I can do this myself. You absolutely can, but you first have to know what to do. What information exists? What am I missing out on? Where are the gaps in my knowledge so that I know better and then can do better? So many social media influencers are talking about get rich quick things that they forget to share the basics. You want to know why? Because the basics are not sexy. But if you do the basics from the beginning, you won't need to hit the lottery because you'll be good either way. You won't need the get rich quick scheme because you've been slowly but surely doing things that make sense so that you can create wealth for yourself. Get out of your own way and don't let anybody else get in your way. The last thing I'll say is that misery loves company. So be aware of what a distraction is, what a distracted person looks like. And the fact that their number one goal is to distract the people around them so they have some company in their misery. Step outside of the box, understand your goals, understand your money, stay away from the distractions, and let's set about the work of becoming financially literate. I've got two options for you. If you are a single young lady, you can come meet me in Atlanta on October the 14th to the 17th, and everyone else who is interested can jump online starting October the 1st, I believe it is, whatever the first Sunday is in October. And let's do 12 weeks of getting your finances organized. Yes, we're going right through the holidays. That's when people want to avoid getting their finances together. They want to do all the financial damage and then say, I'm going to start fresh in the new year. No, we are closing out 2021 with a plan to go into 2022 swinging. Join me, my team, and the other members of this cohort as we set about the business of becoming financially literate, financially organized, and changing the trajectory of our financial future. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox. I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you in two weeks with Chloe. And we'll be talking stock options.